This video is brought to you by Squarespace. When it comes to websites, online stores, etc., there's no place to build a beautiful online presence like Squarespace. The worst part of Nope was the trailers. If you saw Nope, you likely saw a slew of horror trailers before it, one of which was a trailer for Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. This movie, based on the trailer, looked like a disaster. It didn't look scary or funny, and the dialogue sounded like it was made by an AI designed to sound like Gen Z Twitter. I mean, the tagline was, this is not a safe space. Get the f out of here. But I love Rachel Sennett, I love Pete Davidson, and most importantly, I love a whodunit slasher comedy, so I went to the earliest screening possible. My expectations, I'll admit, were on the floor, but Bodies, Bodies, Bodies really surprised me, in that not only was it an entertaining blast, but it is also maybe a modern classic for the horror genre that perfectly captures Gen Z. This movie is a blast, but I also think it gets away with a lot of it for very specific reasons that I really want to talk about, uh, so I'm gonna do that, okay? The movie is about a group of 20-somethings playing a game where one of them is secretly a killer, but then a real killing takes place and things get wild as they have to figure out who did it. What I find really interesting about this movie is how much it does with a familiar story. I mean, you might be asking, why why do we need another young horror slasher? Don't we get a new one like every six years that tries to modernize this genre? We all know how these movies play out. There's a killer and there's a group of people and everyone dies off one by one. If it's a good movie, the killer is very meticulously revealed and is always a surprise. And Bodies, Bodies, Bodies does have a great reveal that I won't spoil. Some of you might roll your eyes at it. I thought it was brilliant and I'll talk about it later. And it does have this familiar structure that doesn't really surprise you. I don't think it's a spoiler to say people die in the slasher film, but the kills are so so fun and interesting, and the order in which people die really helps drive home what the movie wants to say, which is that technology heavily affects the way in which this new generation acts socially. It brings a new, authentic, and sort of cynical perspective to the genre that hasn't been seen before. The thing that I was most worried about going into this movie was obviously the dialogue. The film throws around words like gaslight and toxic. Trying to accurately capture how people speak currently runs the risk of being extremely corny. If you do it wrong and you're 40 years old, you end up with something like Thor Love and Thunder which is just a disaster. But internet movies like Spree do the same thing. The chat aspect of that film does an excellent job at capturing the language of the internet, and yes, it's extremely corny and dumb to read, but that's what most chats look like. The film would not work without that. But Bodies, Bodies, Bodies goes a step further with it. While it does feel pretty cringy in the trailer, this language really works in the context of the film, and part of that is because of how well these characters sell it. Rachel Sennett is like, so good in this movie, and I'm not just saying that because she's a mutual of mine on Twitter who has never liked a single thing I've posted, but she is fantastic fantastic. It always feels like she's reading the lines in the funniest way possible. And on the other side, you have performances from Amanda Stenberg, Maria Bakalova, and even Pete Davidson that are surprisingly dramatic. Pete's got this one scene where he gets sort of angry, and seeing that guy pissed was just really unsettling. Am I alone in saying that? In my opinion, this is an incredibly difficult script to find the correct tone for. It's goofy, but in order for the chaos and the stakes to be felt, the actors do need to bring a dramatic element to it that they absolutely end up delivering. But past all of that, what works most about this movie, and what separates it from other movies about the current culture, is that it doesn't talk down on it. For one, the film does know its audience. It's a horror slasher. They casted Pete Davidson, an A-lister to the current generation, and Rachel Sennett, a comedic voice that tailors very well to a Twitter audience. Like, this wouldn't work if it made this crowd out to be idiots, because the people seeing this movie are this crowd. In a New York Times article about the film, one of the stars, Chase Sweet Wonders, said, I think Gen Z has a brilliant, brilliant way of latching onto words, giving them so much beautiful meaning and having it spread like wildfire across cultures, and then have it swallowed by irony. The film knows that if it wants to be a proper satire of the current generation, it can't just dunk on them. The film isn't saying, look how ridiculous this sounds. It isn't like they just point a camera and say, okay, talk like they do on Twitter. These words are put in the high stakes scenario of people being murdered, and when you go from a scary anxiety-inducing event to Rachel Sennett talking about being an ally, you just have to laugh. Because in that context, that word just loses all meaning. They're just saying these words. And not only is it really funny, but it says a lot about how this generation uses language. The satire never feels eye-rolling, which is just a massive accomplishment when dealing with this kind of crowd. Now, it is a good-ass time, but the film isn't all laughs. And in fact, some of the more intense moments do more to critique Gen Z than the humor does. At the end of the day, it is a horror movie, and there 
there are moments that feel just downright dirty. What this film understands about this generation is the self-centeredness of the characters. This is gonna sound so old and boomery, but just stay with me. A huge part of why people in this generation treat others the way they do is technology. And on that note, real quick, the film uses technology in really cool ways. Like most of the lighting in the back half is from phone screens, which is such a nice touch. But communicating with people through a group chat or through social media, whatever, it makes it a lot easier to attack others without the consequences. It's just common knowledge at this point that technology is very isolating. Algorithms tailoring feeds specifically made for you, removing people from a group chat, a friend group with just a tap. People are just mean, and the act of opening up in this self-absorbed context is used less as a means of personal growth and more for other people to use it against you. Now, this isn't the case with everybody, obviously, but the self-absorption is incredibly real in this generation. Just go on Twitter and see how miserable it is. And Bodies aims to tackle it through horror. I think to wrap up what exactly the film is saying, I need to spoil the ending, so if you haven't seen the film yet, just get out of here. At the end of Bodies, it's revealed that Pete Davidson's character David, the first dead body to show up, was never murdered by anyone in the first place. He accidentally slit his throat with a sword while filming a TikTok. Hilarious. Which, like I said, maybe was an eye roller to some people, but I think this is a pretty brilliant choice and really hammers home a lot of what the film is trying to say. Because not only does it recontextualize most of this movie, I can't wait to see it a second time just knowing there wasn't a killer the entire time, but more importantly, in a film where people are constantly stepping on someone else in order to survive, this revelation at the end of the film that it was them all along, it's their own self-obsession and narcissism that killed them, it's brilliant. It's the final case the film makes for not being anti-Gen Z. If there was a real killer all along, the film would feel like their actions were justified or innocent and like these kids were just annoying. But the film isn't surface level in that way. These characters aren't just annoying. The way they treat each other feeds into the narcissism and self-obsession that you see throughout the film, and it's that self-obsession that ultimately kills them. And I think the film handles that in a really clever and kind of hilarious way in the end. So in short, I personally think this is a really good movie that satirizes the current digital age in a way that doesn't talk down on its subjects and has a really fun time in the process. I mean, truly, above all, this thing is just plain fun and that's reason enough to see it. So thanks for watching. Go watch Bodies, Bodies, Bodies and form your own opinion. Although if you made it this far in the video, I'm assuming you already saw the movie because of spoilers. And before you head out, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, Squarespace, if you didn't already know, is a place where you can go online to build that brand of yours, whether it be an online store, a blog, a portfolio, you name it. They have professional portfolio designs where you can create galleries for your work, as well as password protected pages for clients. Me personally, as someone that works in film and video, I'm a big fan of their video block feature, which allows me to showcase some of my favorite work in a way that looks really pleasing to the eye. Plus, they have a built-in mobile web designer, which makes it so that any website you make will look good no matter what platform it's on, while still matching that style of yours. But the best part about it all is that if you go to squarespace.com slash Karsten, you can get 10% off of your first purchase. So seriously, there's no reason not to give it a chance. I'm a big fan of Squarespace. My friends and family, they're all big fans of Squarespace and you should be too. So thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching this video. And you know what? See you in the next one.